Hello there, I'm Vieno, and this is my fifth video tutorial on D3. In this uh, video, we're going to take a look at something called scales, which are a really useful tool, tool in uh, D3. And uh, uh, yeah, so let's just dive right into it. The, in the previous video, we set up this bar chart, which looks like this uh, in the browser. And what we're doing essentially is binding this small data set up here which is stored in the data array variable and we set the width we let the width be a function um, of the data right so for each bar the width is a function of the data the corresponding data value times 10 so the width of the first bar is 200 pixels, the second one is 400, and the third one is uh, 500. Uh, but what if something, a strange value, uh, would enter into our data set? Well, not a strange value, but let's say a, a larger value. Let's say 600. Now, since our container, our SVG container here, has these prop, uh, these dimensions: 500 in width and 500 in height. Uh, I guess you can already guess what will happen. So let's save this and refresh. And you can see that we have an additional bar here, but the width of the bar is the same as for the previous one. So let's take a look at this again. Uh, well, actually, let's just say 60 and refresh, and we have the same uh, result. So, um, the reason why this is, is that uh, since we're multiplying each value by 10, this value right here will be 600, right? Because 60 times 10 is 600. But the width of our container is only 500 pixels. So everything... Um, that exceeds this limit will be chopped off. So this one is actually uh, goes to like here, but since we, our container ends right here, it doesn't fit. And this provides a, a good example of when to use scales. Uh, so scales are basically, well, they're both functions and objects at the same time. And what that means is that we treat them as functions, we make use of their functionality, but they, at the same time, they return additional methods that we can use to alter their behavior. But let's, uh, let's take a look at how scales uh, actually behave. So let's set up a basic scale. And what we want to use this scale for is to take an input range. Uh, which is our data right here, and transform that range into a new range with, which will fit into our container. So the largest value, we want the largest value to have the maximum width, uh, and, um, and for each data point to be recalculated so that they all fit nicely together in this uh, in our container um, and the way we do this is by so first of all let's let's start with a good practice of not uh, determining not setting our width and heights in the container uh, directly in the attribute instead we create a couple of new variables so let's say the width variable is 500 and the height variable is 500 as well and then we can just type in the name of the var variables here. All right, and uh, let's create our scale variable. Uh, let's call this um, the width scale. And the way you define scales is like this. You type out D3 and make use of the scale method and then you have a number of different scales to choose from and th the most common one is the linear scale 
and what what this means is basically that um, the values in the cal calculated range are the result of a linear function applied applied to uh, the domain values. So this range right here is actually called a domain in D3, and the resulting range is called the range. So what we need to do now is uh, let the scale know uh, where to fetch the data from, where what the original range is, and the way we do that is make is to make use of the um, domain uh, method, and this simply well, like I said, this defines our original range, and you need to include this range between brackets and square br brackets like this, and the first value we want to type in is the minimal minimal value and that will be zero in our case and the second one will be the largest value in our data set so right now it's 60 so let's type in 60 and the next method we want to make use of works in the same way but this time we define uh, what the resulting range should be so zero, zero should still be zero but uh, the maximum value should always should never exceed 500. So let's say let's set the maximum value here to correspond to the width of our container. So let's set now we can actually make use of our newly created variable right here and uh, finish this off with a se semicolon. Now down here in our uh, our anonymous function which determines the width of each bar instead of letting the width be a function of the, the, the data uh, directly we can erase all this and make use of our scale so the way we do that is we return the scale and input the value uh, that the scale will transform so we t simply type in d here. So for each data, uh, for each data point here, uh, the data will go uh, into the scale, and the scale will produce a new range which will fit into our container. And uh, this anonymous function here here will return the new value, right? So let's save this and take a look at what it looks like in the browser. So, as you can see, all the bars uh, fit fit nicely into our container, um, and uh, yeah, I guess you understand what what the scale does by now. Um, and scales can actually they don't need to only uh, deal with numbers. Let's say right now all all our bars here are black let's say we wanted to give them a color the way we do that is make use of the fill um, property so we can just could just type in red here and save and refresh and they they'd all be red but we can actually make use of uh, scales when it comes to colors as well so let's define a new color scale let's just call that color and that will be a linear scale as well and the domain will be the same let's see here it will go from 0 to 60 but the range in this case will be a range of colors so let's say we wanted the colors to go from red for the smallest values to blue for the largest values Let's try this, and instead of letting uh, the, the field be red, let's create a new anonymous function, and let that function return for each value, uh, pass it on to our, our color scale, and return a, a color shade within this range right so let's save and ref 
refresh and as you can see the smallest value has the reddest uh, shade and this one is completely blue because it's uh, it's the maximum value so if we if we were to change this to let's say five it's even redder right because it's closer to our minimal minimum value yeah so that was a short introduction to scales and this is something that we will use extensively uh, from now on so yeah i'll see you in the next video